what's going on everybody so today uh, I've had a lot of people talk about it and I've had personal conversations with people and it's come up quite a bit where everyone's nervous to take a driving test in a manual car and while I can't say I did for myself I know people that did and I was looking around a lot on the Ontario because that's where I'm at their government website and I'm assuming a lot of the rules apply for other places around the world but I'm going to explain all the rules listed on their website and what what you can and can't do and hopefully answer a lot of the questions and uh, subdue a lot of the fears you might have going into the test. So I'm going to be covering a lot of things that I know a lot of people have questions on whether it be on forums or people that have actually asked in real life but I'm going to pretty much explain where you can change gears, how to stop, how to park and how to accelerate and hopefully again you get something out of it and it answers at least one or two of your questions if you have any at all. I never took the G or G2 driving test in a manual car as I was easily accessible to go into an automatic and I would recommend you do the same. No driving instructor is really impressed with you driving manual. It's not going to get you any extra points. It's just more room for error and I wouldn't recommend it if you have the option to drive an automatic. If it's a parent's car, a friend's car, someone that will lend you an automatic car, please feel free to take it. But if you're confident in your driving abilities and you're, you're really just you, the only car you have is a manual car, these are the, the, the rules to make sure you get the least amount deducted as possible, if any at all. So we'll start off with uh, one of the easy ones is where to change gears. A lot of people don't know because you would imagine it's a pretty self-explanatory uh, topic as you just shift as you normally would shift when it hits 3,000 4,000 rpm and Go from there, but there's a lot that even learning like reading through it I learned about it and one thing I didn't know is you're not allowed to change Gears in any bends or curves in the road just because you're not in full control of the vehicle Even though you and I both know you are we uh, we get that Especially downshifting though, you cannot do it in a corner, but upshifting as well because you're not in control of the vehicle. A lot of a lot of cops and a lot of instructors, anyone that has gone through driving tests I guess, you're not allowed to coast in any way, shape or form. Coming to a stop, you're not supposed to coast in until the very end, but we'll get to that in a minute. And when you have your clutch in, it is considered coasting. So around bends and curves, you're not in control of the vehicle, which you have to be fully control of. Both hands on the on the steering wheel and make sure you're not it clutch in or shifting or else it's possible to lose control of the vehicle. Again, especially downshifting, if you're in a rear wheel drive car, you downshift on a corner, you know that it, it can get a little sketchy and sometimes you might want to slide out. But no matter what you're in, do not downshift or upshift on a bend or a curve in the road as it will be points deducted and hopefully you don't actually get those points off in any way. Another one is you're not allowed to change gears in an intersection. This one confuses a lot of people because you're going to be wondering how am I going to stay in first gear? Do they expect me to rev 6,000 RPM through the intersection? The answer is yes. Unless you are way before and you have time to hit the next gear before you're into the intersection or you're after the intersection, you cannot change gears, whether it be a stop sign or a light or anything. The only exceptions are to this rule is if the intersection is more than four lanes and you are not going to be slowing down traffic. That's the big thing they are worried about is that when you change gears, you slow down for a brief second, but it's enough to halt traffic according to the ministry. So just be careful on changing gears in any intersection. Even if it's four lanes, I don't think personally I'd, I'd risk it because that's just points again that you don't want deducted from your final score. So you can't change gears in intersection. They want you to rev 6,000 through the entire thing because you're in, first of all, you're in control of the vehicle. You're not supposed to have two hands off the wheel going through an intersection. And second of all, because it slows down traffic according to them, which debatable. The next one is turning and fully turning 90 degrees left or right going anywhere. You cannot change gears in a turn. Even if it's a left turn, and again, you're revving 6,000, you're almost red line, you can't change gears. You stay in first gear until you are done the intersection, or you're away before it, say if there's three cars in front of you, and you can hit second before you enter the intersection without slowing down traffic, because they, they worry about that on acceleration. If you can't slow down traffic, and you can hit second gear before the intersection, perfect. If not, you stay in first the entire way through. I know it's going to be a little bit, a little bit jumpy, but that's what they want. 
I don't know why, but they see as you're in more control of the vehicle at that point. Same with the right turn. Right turns are no exception. I know it's a lot shorter, it's a lot easier, just make sure you do not shift on a turn in an intersection in any way, shape, or form, whether you're going straight, left, or right. Don't change gears in an intersection. So the next point we'll cover is stopping. Coming to a red light, coming to a stop sign, coming to a emergency roadside park, because I know a lot of them in Ontario will make you do that. I did it on my G test, and I did it on my G2 test as well. So they're gonna probably make you do it, and I don't want you to get points off while doing it, so. These are the things you have to do to make sure you come into a stop properly according to the MTO and a manual transmission. So the first one is you must downshift while decelerating. I know it's weird and I know it's easier and you want to save your clutch and you want to just brake. You have to downshift. They want in their in their quote, they want you to treat the car as if it's an automatic because that's the, apparently apparently the, it's the safest way to drive. So you must downshift while dis decelerating until second gear. I, you can't downshift in a first or else it's going to just explode. But downshift if you have a 6 or 5 speed in 4, 3, 2, 1. Or 3, 2. Don't go to 1. Again. I know it's pain, but th this is what they want you to do. And again, this is all part of their law. It, whether I agree with it or not, I'm just telling you what they want you to do so you don't get any points off. I have another video on proper ways to not even proper ways, but easier ways to downshift if you would like to try those, because I know slamming it in a, a lower gear can make the car a little jumpy. The main thing is do not coast. Do not put your foot on the clutch and the brake and just ride it out. Especially do not throw your, your shifter in neutral, or else they will really dock you points on that. You have to downshift. Clutch in, throw the gear lower, let the clutch out. If you want to know what proper ways to downshift, I'll link my other video in the description below, or you can go look for it on my channel, one or the other. But I have that; it might help you out in the in the end game. So go check it out, please, if you if you want to learn how to downshift properly. And I know a lot of people have the question. I was reading a lot on forums while doing research for this video. If you're at a light or a stop sign, and you it seems self-explanatory, but the proper way to hold your your car at a stoplight or a stop sign is clutch in, foot on the brake, first gear. That's the way you're supposed to do it. If you're sitting in neutral, you will not have full control over the vehicle and they will dock you points. If you're in a different gear, they will consider it that you aren't paying full attention and you aren't aware of everything going on around you and they will dock you points. The only way you are able to do it is first gear, foot on the clutch. Ask your driver instructor when, when they get in the car or the, the tester, Get it when he gets in the car. Ask him what he prefers. Say this is what I was told. I was I learned on on the website. But ask what he prefers because there was one or two cases that I read that the instructor understood that manual driving your foot might get tired on the clutch the entire time, and they will say it's okay for neutral. But this is the way you are supposed to be at a light or a stop sign or anytime you're stopped. It's first gear, foot on the clutch, foot on the brake. The next point I'm going to cover is parking. Parking at all, whether it be on the roadside or into a parking lot when you make, they make you back in, pull in, parallel park, or for the, again, the emergency roadside stop, which I got several times. So the best way to park and the only way to park is the same way you do in an automatic. And I hope everyone watching this has done the practice sheet online or at least the, like, read up on the rules and guidelines of it. For an emergency stop, the rule is to signal, look at your mirrors, signal, make sure, double check mirror blind spot, get over to the side of the road, then slowly decelerate, come to a stop, and from here, in an automatic, you just throw it in park, put the e-brake on, and you're done. In a manual, you do the same thing. Check your mirrors, signal, check your blind spot, check your mirror, get over to the side of the road, slowly decelerate, again, downshifting, and then when you get to the stop, whether the instructor wants you to turn your car off or not, when you get to the stop, put your car in neutral, hold your foot on the clutch, pull the e-brake, and then they and then ask, car off or car on? They say, turn it off, turn the car off, and whether you're going uphill, so if your car is facing uphill, or whether it's facing downhill, you would put your car in first if it's uphill, and reverse if it's downhill. Because they want, if the car engine's off, they want you to be in one of the two gears. So again, when you pull over, pull the e-brake, leave it neutral if your engine's running, and put it in one of the two gears if your engine's off. And lastly, for accelerating. Accelerating is a pretty easy one. It, this one's the most normal to everyone else, but 
when you accelerate, try and accelerate as smoothly as possible. So make sure you have a lot of practice in a manual car before you get in into the instructor or into your driving test. And slowly accelerate off of the light from first gear, get through the intersection, wherever you are, and then smoothly shift gears as you're accelerating. If the traffic's heavier, you're gonna have to accelerate faster. That's understandable. They, they won't dock you marks on it if you're revving a little bit higher because they understand you have to speed up. So just make sure you smoothly shift gears and you'll be perfectly fine. But that's pretty much it for taking your test in a manual car. It's not too difficult if you can get the if you can get all these points down but it is intimidating because a lot of these are easy to forget especially if you've been doing it it's muscle memory shift gears in an intersection and we always we all do it no one can say they don't same with on a on a winding road or anything like that if you're if the winding road's coming right after an intersection you're not going to sit in first or second through the entire thing so Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like. If it helped you out, please leave a like. It does help me and the channel out a lot. And if you want to see more of my content, please feel free to subscribe. As again, it does help me and the channel out a lot. I upload every Wednesday. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.